the name of Jesus. He saves. That's the message that we hear and share this morning as the angel Gabriel told Mary that she was to name her child Jesus. And we're so thankful that not only is Jesus named Jesus, he really truly is who his name said, our Savior. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that, that the, the King, King of, of glory, glory may come in. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And, and, who, and who shall, shall stand, stand in his holy place? place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, 
who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. For he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. We sing our opening hymn, which is based on that psalm we just read, Psalm 24. Oh, yeah. 
Lord, open my lips, and my, and my mouth, mouth shall, shall declare your praise. praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make, Make haste, haste to help me, O Lord. Lord. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, the beginning is, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, come, let, let us, us worship, worship him. him. Our first lesson is from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. second lesson is from 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter. Now when the king lived in his house, 
and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Our third lesson is from Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Yeah. 
of this morning's message is the gospel lesson read earlier, especially where the angel tells Mary to name the baby Jesus. We pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The other day I was channel flipping on the car radio and I came across a story on NPR about the end of the hurricane season. They were talking about how many hurricanes there had been and how unusual it was to have used not only the 21 names assigned earlier, but to have to move on to the Greek alphabet in order to name the storms as well. The discussion also talked then about why hurricanes were even named in the first place. It had started in Australia where a meteorologist named Clement Raggy had been na started naming storms until he was fired for naming storms after politicians. During World War II, when American soldiers in the Pacific needed a way to talk about the strong storms there, they started picking up that tradition and started using female names. Over the decades, male names were added too. But why do we even name them? Well, naming something makes it easier to report on storms. It makes it easier to talk about storms, both regular media and social media. It makes it easier for a storm to hold our attention once the storm passes and it's time for the recovery and relief efforts. As the report said, naming something, even if it's this inanimate swirl of wind and warm waters, just makes it feel real and more memorable. Names have power. What's in a name? That was Juliet's question in Shakespeare's famous play, Romeo and Juliet. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. But in fact, there's actually quite a lot in a name. Names are important, full of meaning. Sometimes they signify a family's trade, like Smith or Baker. Uh, some names tell you who someone's ancestors were, like Johnson or Anderson. But names have more power than just telling us about people. Names are signs of love and of closeness. Studies have shown that patients want their doctors to call them by name, even though only half of doctors do so. As a child, you probably remember that once your parents called your full name, you were in really big trouble. But the same name said in a different tone of voice with a hug meant something more important that you, than being in trouble. Being called by name also means that you are loved. The name given to Jesus has importance and power too. While we often focus when we hear this story of the enunciation of the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary, we often focus on the reaction of Mary. We often just pass over the little detail of the name of Jesus. Amid all the other information Mary receives from the angel is the name she is to give to her miraculous child, Jesus. Now, for us, that might seem like a really important name, but not, it might not have for Mary. Jesus was a very common name in Israel at the time. One article claims that archaeologists have unearthed 
the tombs of 71 men named Yeshua or Jesus from Israel about 2,000 years ago. We find at least one other Jesus in the New Testament, Jesus Barabbas, the one who is released by Pilate instead of Jesus of Nazareth. It's a common name, though, because of the hope of the people of that time that God would come to save his people again, as he had throughout history. We also remember that it's not just Mary who receives the instructions to give the name Jesus to the miraculous child. Joseph, too, is told to name the child Jesus in his own angelic encounter. The angel tells Joseph in a dream, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The fact that they were both given the same name to give this child would have certainly encouraged Joseph that he and Mary were both a part of something special. So what does this name mean? Well, Jesus is the Greek and Latin form of the Hebrew name Yeshua or Joshua, which means the Lord saves. It reminds us that even before Jesus' conception, God had a plan for Jesus to be our Savior and to rescue us from sin. Jesus' name says who he is and what he came to do. Jesus saves. And Jesus can save because of how special he is. Because Jesus is God, he is able to forgive our sins. And because Jesus is fully human, he's able to bear the punishment for our sins in his body. That is why he came to save his people from their sins. That's why he came to save us from our sins. He, Jesus is called by a lot of different names, but Jesus is the most wonderful name. We read in Hebrews and Philippians that Jesus is the name above all names. When Peter appears before the Sanhedrin, preaching, he preaches that Jesus is the only name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Yet, what is this so special about this name? Why does it matter what we call him? If, would it make any difference if he'd been called Bob or Steve or Frank instead? Well, in the ancient world, we're reminded that names had power. It was more than just what you called someone. They meant something. They captured the essence of a person, their character, their reputation, the circumstances of their birth, or their parents' hopes and dreams for their future. Names mattered because a person and their name were one and the same. The first man created is called Adam because he is made out of the earth, or in Hebrew, Adama. The baby who is drawn out of the Nile River is named Moses because he is drawn out of the river in the basket. Daniel is renamed Belshazzar when he is in Babylon because the Babylonians thought he needed a name that praised the Babylonian gods, not a name that praised the God of the Israelites. And so it is with Jesus. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the one who saves. But a Savior saves you from someone or something. What does Jesus save us from? Well, when we read in the small catechism that we're saved from sin, death, and the power of the devil. That's why the angel told Joseph in his dream, and the angel told Mary to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins. We, too, Joseph and Mary, followed the instructions of the angel and named their child Jesus because he would save the people from their sins. But it wasn't just that name received from his parents. It was the name planned out for him. It was the name given to him by his heavenly Father as well. That name, too, is placed on us because we have received a name from our Heavenly Father. In baptism, God called you by name, added you to his family. The name of Jesus was placed on you. And because you have been called by name, because you have been chosen by God to be his beloved child, God promises that he will never let you go. God promises that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus came to save us from our sins. 
Jesus came to save you from your sins. Someday he will come again to judge the living and the dead. But right now, as we look into the manger with Mary and Joseph, we see that Jesus comes with salvation. We see that God fulfills his promises. We see that the Lord saves. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful name. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. Jesus, Jesus said, said, In the, in the same, same way, let your, your light shine before others, before others so that they, they may see your good works, works and, and give glory to your Father who is, who is in heaven. heaven. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Jesus, Jesus said, When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud but, but gives, gives grace, grace to, to the, the humble. humble. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Blessed, blessed are, are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, forgiven and, and whose sins, sins are covered. Blessed, blessed is the man against, against whom, whom the Lord will not, will not count, count his sin. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. But, but Jesus, Jesus looked, looked at them, them and said, With, with man, man this, this is impossible. impossible. But, but with, with God, God all, all things, things are, are possible. And holy is his name. Hallowed be thy name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. He has shown strength with his arm. Oh, sing, oh, sing to, to the Lord a new song, song for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. Behold, all who are incensed against you, Israel, shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. Jesus, Jesus said, said, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel. God, God is our refuge and strength, and strength a, very a very present help in trouble. trouble. In remembrance of his mercy. For, For as high as the, as the heavens are above the earth, so great, great is God's, God's steadfast mercy toward, toward those who fear him. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, God, God said, said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed and to his offspring forever. Let, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope, hope without, without wavering, for, for he who promised is faithful.
Father, we thank you for sending into our world your Son, Christ the Messiah, and giving him the name Jesus, which means he saves. Jesus saves us by his sacrifice for us on the cross. Help us to look alone to him to save us. So often we push out of our lives that salvation by focusing on trivial things like immediate comfort and what ingratiates us. Forgive us and keep our eyes on our Savior, Jesus. Be with all those who are dealing with the pandemic, health workers, researchers, those who have lost their jobs or have been out of work, those who are in schools. Keep us safe during this strange time. We pray for those who are ill, for Barbara Royer, who had surgery this week, for Mary Sue Brown as she continues to recover at home, and for those we name in our hearts at this time. Bless the work of those who share Jesus with people in other lands, our missionaries Thomas Odlin in Kenya and Ronald Wall in Papua New Guinea, who celebrate birthdays this week. For Kibet and his family in Ethiopia, the Grolkis and Klausings on leave from Africa, the Lutzes in Papua New Guinea, Nathan and Beth Tanjas in China, Amanda Groshek in the Ukraine, and the Hansons in South Korea. Make us thankful for all your blessings to us, even in the little things in life, like the sound of Christmas carols and time off from school. All this we pray as you taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and rule with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same way with your mighty power and grant this day that we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 